Well, hello there, folks. I hope you're of good frame of mind. We're going to watch a video now about transforming exponential functions. Hopefully, you kind of have an idea of what that word transforming functions means. And uh, exponential functions may be a little bit unfamiliar, but I think you've seen them before. So we're going to talk about transforming exponential functions. Here's your basic exponential function that you might say, uh, your plain vanilla parent graph for exponential functions, y equals 2 to the x. Now you remember what exponential functions look like? Good. Um, now, what if I wanted to take that equation and do something to it to make the graph slide three units over to the right? You might be able to already figure out what that is. Or what if I wanted to take that graph and shift it down two units? Okay? Yeah, there's some things that we could do to that equation to make it do either of those, thi either of those things. Or, what if I wanted that two to the x graph to reflect across the y axis? How would I do that? Or, reflect across the x-axis. How would I do that? Those are other kinds of transformations that we can do. And even more, we can take our uh, 2 to the x graph and we can flatten it out. I can compress it vertically or I can stretch it up vertically and make it even steeper. That's what I mean by transforming exponential functions, all those different little things. All right. So uh, here is the general structure of an exponential uh, function. All right. A times B to the power of C times x minus h plus k. All right, I'm going to put a little asterisk there about the c. I'm going to talk about that special in just a second. But I do want to talk about all of those little parameters. I think of them as kind of like control knobs uh, on, a, on some kind of machine, and you turn the knob one way, and it does something to the graph, and you turn the knob the other way, and it does something else to the graph. Okay, so uh, the a is our vertical stretch uh, or vertical compression factor. Um, that changes the steepness of the graph, kind of like in that illustration that you're seeing right now. Um, B is the base that is being exponentiated, and that makes a difference on what the curve looks like. Um, so that's an important part of this uh, function form. By the way, if you always wondered what the verb is that means being raised to the power, uh, it's exponentiated. It's kind of a cool little word. Doesn't, you don't hear it too often. Anyway, B is the number being exponentiated. Uh, H is our horizontal shift factor, um, and K is the vertical shift factor. All right? So, uh, and we'll, we'll explore uh, the B and the K in this video, and we'll talk about A and H in a second video. All right? Um, first off, uh, oh, that's right. I, I don't want to leave the C thing there. This is kind of a note to any math teachers watching this video, um, thinking that um, whether it's appropriate or not for your students. I am always going to have C equal 1 in these uh, videos, and that is because uh, while it is true that uh, values not equal to 1 for C are very important in exponential modeling, um, uh, when we're using an exponential function to model some kind of real-world situation. As far as the graphs go, it's not uh, and doesn't have a clear illustrative um, effect on the graph. So I'm going to ignore C for a while and just say that C is going to equal 1. I hope that's okay. If not, there's other videos out there. Okay, let's go on to a first fairly simple example. Y equals, or F of X, equals 2 to the X plus 3. Okay, that's our first example, and you can see that if we, there's our 2 to the x curve, and if we look at our exponential model and uh, examine our function now in that context, we can see that a equals 1, that's just the number multiplying the 2 is just a 1, you don't even see it, uh, b, our base, is, being, is 2, h is 0, and... Um, K equals 3. Now, you see uh, three dots there up here on the screen. What I did was I took uh, my vertical shift of 3 and I applied it to three different points. Um, so like using like a little measuring stick there uh, in a couple of different places on the curve, I can see that I'm just going to shift that graph, graph up three units and here's what it looks like. All right, the reason this is our first example is because it il illustrates something very important about all exponential functions, and namely that they have this thing called a horizontal asymptote. All right, it's a horizontal line that the graph either veers away from or it heads down towards, uh, depending on some other parts of the equation. But they all have a horizontal asymptote. Well, not really. There, I could, if I wanted to, write an exponential function that doesn't have a horizontal asymptote, but we're not going to get into that. Um, so for our purposes, they always have a horizontal asymptote, and what's really nice about that horizontal asymptote is that it is that 
k value. Y equals k is the equation of that horizontal asymptote. Y equals 3 in our case here. That's the horizontal asymptote. It's the one thing of these, hor these exponential functions uh, that you can actually see in the equation that translates directly to a, a feature of the graph. Okay? Whatever that k value is being uh, added or subtracted to all the other exponential stuff, um, that is the location of the horizontal asymptote. It's very important and very convenient. All right? Um, let's talk a little bit about b. Um, in our case here, I'm using b equals 2, and that's basically what 2 to the x looks like. Well, if I wanted to reflect that graph across the y-axis, all I would have to do was be to use the base 1 half, the reciprocal of 2. All right? That's an interesting thing. Uh, if I use uh, the reciprocal of 2 to the x power, I get a reflection across the y-axis. Um, that's an interesting thing right there having to do with negative exponents, and I'm going to let that discussion happen outside of the video here. It's very interesting. Um, but as far as our purposes in this video goes, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that when you use a number that is uh, less than 1, you get a, a curve that goes down towards the um, horizontal asymptote. And so we're going to talk about B here in a general sense, just, just to finish up this video here. All right? So if B is a number that is greater than 1, we are talking about exponential growth. That is, uh, a number greater than 1, when you raise it to higher and higher powers, the value of that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. In other words, when B is greater than 1, as X gets bigger, Y gets bigger. It's going up. All right? And whereas, if b is a number between 0 and 1, we are talking about exponential decay. That is, as x gets bigger, going to the right, the y values are getting smaller and smaller, closer to 0, or whatever the horizontal asymptote may be. And that is because when you take a fraction and multiply it times itself, you get a smaller result. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, times 1 half again in other words, to the third power, it's one-eighth. If I raise one-half to the fourth power, I get one-sixteenth, etc. It's getting smaller. So astute math students, uh, as you are, you may have noticed that I'm saying greater than one or greater than zero, and I'm not saying any equals. There's not be greater than or equal to or any of that going on here, and you may wonder why. Could I have a base that is equal to one or that is equal to zero, or could I have a base that is less than zero? And the answer to those questions is yes, but no. We're not going to have any bases that equal 1. We're not going to have any bases that equal 0. And we're not going to have any bases that are less than 0. All right? So this is our restrictions on B. B is greater than 0, and B does not equal 1. Just briefly, if you thought about having a base equal to 1, what does 1 to the x look like, do you think? 1 to any power always equals 1, right? So we could have a base equal to 1, but it would just be a flat horizontal line, y equals 1. So it's of no value in terms of exponential functions or exponential growth or decay. It's just a horizontal line at y equals 1. And the same kind of thing happens when if you, if you let b, the base, equal 0. Uh, 0 to any power is still 0, kind of an odd little thing that 0 and 1 share, that when you raise them to any power, they don't change. It's kind of cool. Um, and so, uh, so we're never going to let b equal 1 or 0. Now, what about uh, a base that's negative? Negative 2 to the x power, for example. Well, I'm going to leave it up to you to choose some kind of graphing tool and mess around with that. See what happens. See if you can explain what happens. It's very interesting, but once again, we are just not going to have any bases that are negative numbers. All right. Okay, that's enough for this first video. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, stay tuned for part two coming up.